Great Ocean Walk The Great Ocean Walk is a walking trail located on Victoria's south, west coast in Australia, traversing several areas of historical and cultural significance. The track makes extensive usage of eco-friendly facilities, with Parks Victoria and tour guide operators attempting to raise environmental awareness. The trail meanders along high cliff tops and sandy beaches. Track the Great Ocean Walk is a walking track located 200 kilometers southwest of Melbourne. It stretches 104 kilometers from Apollo Bay to Glenample Homestead, located near the Twelve Apostles, Victoria. The walk passes through the Otway National Park, with Parks Victoria providing seven hike-in camp sites spaced at intervals of 10 km to 15 km along the track. Guided tours are offered by several operators, with the walk estimated to take approximately eight days to complete. All walkers are required to register with Parks Victoria and must book for use of campsites. The track hugs coastline which is not always visible from the Great Ocean Road and traverses an area which hosts koalas, wallabies, echidnas, reptiles, bird species, snakes including tiger, brown and copperhead ants, bees, European wasps and leeches. From June through September, whales can be spotted along the coastline. The track passes through several named areas, including Elliott Ridge, Blanket Bay, Cape Otway, Air River, Johanna Beach, Ryan's Den, and Devil's Kitchen. The difficulty of the track increases along the walk, with the section between Apollo Bay and Cape Otway suitable for beginners, becoming more challenging when reaching the rugged terrain through Ryan's Den. In addition, travelers need to note that sections of track can be dangerous or impassable at high tide. Facilities Tourism and park officials offer bus services to and from accommodations, ranging from basic campsites to modern eco-lodges which utilize alternative energy. There are seven dedicated hiking camps along the walk at Elliott Ridge, Blanket Bay, Cape Otway, Air River, Johanna Beach, Ryan's Den and Devil's Kitchen. Elliott Ridge, Blanket Bay, and Cape Otway have three dedicated group camping areas with access to the same facilities as the hike in campsites, including environmentally friendly toilet, a three sided shelter, and park benches. Blanket Bay, Parker Hill, Air River, and Johanna Beach host drive in campsites. Approximately $500,000 was spent on constructing the campsites with each selected after taking into account environmental, cultural, geotechnical, experiential risk, cost, and community interests. Over 30 sites were investigated during the planning phase. Each campsite has between 8 and 15 camping pads, a toilet, untreated rainwater tanks, camp benches, and, except for Blanket Bay, a shelter. The Clivis Multrum toilets are a self-contained waterless, odorless continuous composting system. They were sized above their capacity taking into account climatic factors. Waste material and wood shavings compost in the tanks and the vent pipe to reduce odors. Recycled red gum posts were sought from demolished wharfs at Docklands, which are used as feature posts for the toilets and shelter. Radial sawn yellow string bark timbers from East Gippsland have been used for cladding of the buildings. This form of saw log creates minimal waste and features the natural curves of the tree. Native cypress from northern New South Wales and Queensland was sourced for posts and framing to provide resistance to termites and rot. Fourteen tons of material was flown into the campsites at Ryan's Den and Devil's Kitchen by helicopter. A Jet Ranger helicopter carried a maximum load of 600 kg which accounted for the single 7M long red gum posts. Each campsite took an average of six weeks to build. There are two hygiene stations at Blanket Bay and Parker Inlet to reduce the potential spread of Phytophthora cinnamomy. Tracks may be closed and rehabilitated at times to protect sensitive sand dunes and cultural sites. Sections of disturbed land are revegetated with indigenous species. History the idea to create the Great Ocean Walk was originally rejected in 1974. 
It was, however, rumored to have been resurrected by local accommodation providers in the early 1990s, with planning actually beginning in 1994. Development did not begin until 2001, with the trail finally opening in January 2006. Parks Victoria provided an initial investment of $2.03 million for a 91-kilometer trail between Apollo Bay and the Glen Apple Homestead near the Twelve Apostles. Construction efforts included clearing 25 kilometers of previously existing track, with most of the new track constructed by hand using mattocks, shovels, and crowbars. Hand-built local and imported stone was used for rock steps, put in place by power carriers and turf for winches. Elevated steps were built for the steeper terrain. Stepping stones, small rock bridges, and a single timber bridge were built to cross water areas. Track work has also been performed by volunteers, including Conservation Volunteers Australia, Green Corps, Deakin University, and the Regional Employment and Education Program. In 2009, extra funding was allocated to build 10 kilometers of additional walking track from Moonlight Head to the Twelve Apostles Visitor Center, as well as a viewing point for the Twelve Apostles, new trail signage, seats, and environmental boot cleaning stations. The upgrade, worth $1.03 million, was slated to be completed by April 2010. On 25 June 2010, Premier John Brumby announced that $6.03 million was being allocated to upgrade 100 kilometers of walking track for all season weather access, off-road track realignment, and campsite extensions at Princetown and Johanna. Parks Victoria allocated $4.02 million for the project, while the state government allocated $2.01 million from the Regional Development Infrastructure Fund. The Art of Walking Documentary A one-hour documentary by Zach Murch, titled The Art of Walking, Great Ocean Walk, depicted the track as walked by American environmentalist John Francis, German Olympic figure skater Katarina Witt, and Paralympic skier Michael Milton led by head ranger Will Cox. The documentary premiered on Australian and New Zealand's National Geographic Channel on 2 May 2010. Points of historical interest The Great Ocean Walk traverses the Otways, an area rich in fossils, including those of a dinosaur that roamed the area 105 million years ago. The area is also littered with various shipwrecks, including the ships Marie Gabriel in 1869 and Fiji in 1891 at Johanna Beach and Wreck Beach, respectively. To combat further shipwrecks on the Bay Strait Coast and King Island, the Cape Otway Light Station was built in 1848, standing 18 meters tall at 90 meters above sea level. The lighthouse's first operator, Captain James Lawrence, only operated the lighthouse for several months as he was constantly drunk and failed to keep the light shining. Besides that, ship captains hailed the lighthouse as ultimately successful in assisting them performing a dangerous maneuver they referred to as threading the eye of the needle entering the western entrance of Bay Strait. Johanna Beach, occasionally used as a site for surfing tournaments, was named after the Johanna vessel that ran aground there on its maiden voyage from Tasmania in 1843. A single crewman was lost, with the survivors taking an entire week to travel. The historic Glen Ample homestead, built by pioneer pastoralist Hugh Gibson in 1869 from locally quarried sandstone, is situated at the end of Walk. The homestead currently stands as a museum and displays information about the Lockard shipwreck, in which survivors Eva Carmichael and ship apprentice Tom Pierce were taken to the homestead to recover. The homestead also contained information about early station life, including other shipwrecks and local pastoral history. However, the building has been closed indefinitely since 13 September 2007. Wildlife, wildlife, wildlife that can be encountered include koala, sulfur crested cockatoos, rosella, echidna, wallaby, and fairy penguins, kangaroo, peregrine falcon, hooded dotterel, tiger snake, brown snake, and wedge tailed eagles. There are also abundant spots 
where hikers can see southern right whales and fur seal. Hikers are told how to react to possible encounters with dangerous animals snakes at the mandatory orientation session prior to starting the walk.